So now we understand the benefits of doing a user story map, I'm going to take you through a practical example of doing one. So we're going to stick with our example of an online shop and we're going to start by sticking up our activities and our tasks. So let's first begin with sticking up our activities that we'd expect our user to perform. So our first activity, let's say for example, would be to find a product. Okay. And then our next activity would be to examine that product. Examine a product. Okay, cool. Next, we would expect the user, once they've actually found the product and examined it, that they might want to add this to their basket. So another activity would be add to basket. Okay, great. And once they've added something to the basket, we could give them an optional uh, choice of actually signing up to the site so they can come back whenever they want and get recommended products. So we've got find a product, examine a product, add something to a basket and sign up. Next, they'll want to order their product and pay for it. And lastly, we'll have to ship it to the user. So we'll have to ship the product. Okay, great. So here we have our backbone of activities that we will be expecting the user to perform. And once we have this backbone, we can start generating tasks that would associate themselves with these activities. From these tasks, we can then start to build out our customer stories. So we use a different color post-it note. So I'll use some yellow ones right here, and we'll start mapping out our tasks. So we'll begin first at finding a product. So our first task for a user to find a product, let's say, would be to browse categories. That's one way that the user could find a product. The next task that the user could perform is a basic search. Basic, get that straight. Basic search, so they can search for a product to find one. That's absolutely fine. The next way that a user could find a product is via recommendations that we would send to them, via email or on site, for example. Recommendations. And then lastly, we might want to consider an advanced search for the user. On search where they can start filtering categories and refining their search results. So we've got four tasks related to finding a product there. Browse categories, a basic search, product recommendations and an advanced search. So let's continue through our tasks uh, for examine a product. So let's say our first task for a user associated with examining a product would be see the details. user wants to be able to see the details of the product that they've examined. Next, they'd actually want to preview that product. And lastly, maybe they'd want to consider comparing that product to something else that they had previously found. Comparing that product. Okay, great. So we've got three tasks associated with our examiner product activity, and that would be see the details of the product that they've examined, preview that product, and comparing that product to other things that they've seen on the website. So let's move on. So our next activity is adding something to a basket. So what tasks would we associate with this? Well, our first task would be to simply add a product to the basket. Easy. Next task we might consider for the user would be to save something for later in case they don't actually feel like buying it right now. So the next task would be save for later. And then similarly, we can give the user the option to add something to the wish list. Okay, 
So our three tasks associated with add something to the basket, we've got add a product to the basket, which is our most simple interaction. Then we've got save something for later and then adding something to a wish list. Okay, cool. So this is starting to take shape now. So for signing up, let's see. Our first basic interaction for the user would be to sign up with a regular email account. Sign up with email, let's say. Now to make that interaction a little bit easier, we could expand upon that and say, maybe sign up with Facebook. Okay, cool. And then lastly, maybe we could make that even easier and say, sign up with other social media channels. With other social channels. Things like Twitter, LinkedIn, Google, stuff like that. Okay, so our three tasks associated with signing up. Signing up with a basic email, signing up with Facebook, and then finally signing up with other social channels, maybe further down the line. Google, LinkedIn, Twitter, things like that. So let's move on, we've got a couple left. So our next activity for the user would be to order and actually pay for what they've found on the website. So our first task would be to simply place an order. That's the fundamental interaction that we need our user to accomplish. Secondly, maybe we can expand upon that and next time they come back to the website, they can place an order, but we've already cached their data. So their address, their credit card details are already pre-filled. So that'll make the experience a lot quicker. So we could say, place an order using cached data. That would really help our users, that would be really cool. So we've just got two tasks associated with ordering and paying for a product. So lastly, shipping the product. So let's say the first task, the first thing that we'd like to accomplish is really domestic shipping. We would like to ship nationally. Domestic shipping. So we can calculate shipping costs for our country alone. That would make it a lot simpler. Next, we might want to consider international shipping. So our customers can order something from anywhere in the world. So there we have it. We've got two simple tasks for shipping a product, two for ordering and paying for it, three for signing up, three for adding a basket, three for examining a product, and four for finding a product. So this is a really basic example of a user story map. And in the next lesson, we'll be discussing how we can start prioritizing our stories and tasks to be ready for development.